Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have tracks. Okay, so the last thing we want when talking about a huge sinkhole that happens to be in the ocean that holds many different secrets and mysteries at the bottom is to hear that we have found tracks, but we don't know what's causing these tracks. In December of 2018, a team of explorers and scientists decided to finally take a trip down to the bottom to see all there is to find at the bottom of the Great Blue Hole. We'll talk about this expedition a lot today, so remember it. Erica Bergman, who is the chief submarine pilot on the expedition and who is an oceanographer, explained that they had observed tracks at the bottom of the sinkhole, but that they were unable to identify them and that they remain, quote, open to interpretation. This alone isn't the most terrifying thing there, but when we take in some of the other things we know about the hole, like how it's the second largest marine sinkhole in the world, or how there could potentially be an entire cave system lurking somewhere in there, more on that later by the way, things start to get a little more unsettling. It quickly becomes clear that these mystery tracks are only a drop in the bucket of the mysteries of the Great Blue Hole. In our number 9 spot today we have stalacites. The Great Blue Hole is a really popular diving destination, despite the fact that divers obviously can't go all the way to the bottom for a multitude of reasons. When diving here you definitely need quite a bit of experience beforehand and for those lucky ones who have done the work they might be able to get just deep enough to see the incredible stalacites this sinkhole holds. While these are gorgeous to look at they are part of the reason that we know some of the most ancient history behind this place at all. Stalacites are only formed when water is dripping down stone. This gave scientists the insight they needed to realize that this this wasn't always a place that was submerged in water. In fact, they concluded that this was actually a big, dry cave and one of the most prolific eras in the history of our beautiful planet. This means that at some point there was probably a ton of stuff living in it. They believed that the cave likely formed during the last ice age, so sometime prior to 14,000 years ago, but at the end of the ice age it ended up flooding, collapsing, and thus we have the Great Blue Sinkhole. In our number 8 spot today we have movements. This is one that really ties into the last one with the discovery of the stalacites. Of course, when they first found them, they took some samples so that they would be able to confirm their above sea formation. And when doing this analysis, it was realized that not only did they form above sea level, but that some of them were off vertical by about 5 degrees, and that these changes were consistent. This gave another very valuable insight into the history of this location and led scientists to the conclusion that there must have been some past geological shift or tilting of the plateau underneath at some point. This event would have been followed by a long period of relative stillness. This change in the stalacites showed us that the land must have been moving as well, not just the sea level rising. It's not the most unsettling thing on this list, but it certainly is cool. It's really amazing how such a small change can show us so much. In our number 7 spot today we have trash. It has become abundantly clear that there really isn't any place on earth that is free from human influence, and that most definitely includes our litter. If trash can make it to the deepest depths on earth in the Challenger Deep, of course trash can somehow find its way down to the bottom of the Big Blue Hole. During that 2018 expedition we spoke about earlier, the team stumbled across more than they were expecting when they found a littered 2 liter coke bottle, I'm glad it wasn't Pepsi, and they also found a lost GoPro. They were even able to see that this GoPro still contained some vacation photos. Safe to say that it's not the most remarkable discovery they made down there, but it should be something that might be a little concerning to us all. In our number 6 spot today we have sand. Like I mentioned before, this sinkhole obviously has an incredibly rich history and we are just starting to learn about the things that it holds, but it takes time, equipment, and money to really be able to have these sorts of large expeditions like the one in 2018. There might be five fossils or other things just waiting to be uncovered that we don't even know about yet, but the clock is ticking. As it turns out, as quickly as the blue hole appeared, it might also be disappearing. Apparently there are waterfalls of sand that are continually falling into the hole and it's slowly but surely being filled up. It's like a real, very large, kind of scary hourglass, essentially. At least it's not something that's going to happen overnight, so for now we still have time to admire its beauty and take a look at all of the mysteries it might be holding. 
Maybe it just serves as a reminder that nothing is permanent, except for the internet. In our number five spot today, we have more caves. So remember Erica Bergman we talked about before in the first one? She was the one who like led the expedition in 2018, the submarine pilot. Well, she didn't only talk about mysterious tracks. She also explained that there is an enormous cavern close to the bottom of the hole. Like a huge unexplored cavern in the middle of a huge mysterious marine sinkhole. I'm just saying, that's more mystery than I can handle. This means that there could potentially be a large underwater cave system and the great blue hole is just the beginning of it. She said quote, the roof has collapsed on this particular cave, but the whole reef could be dotted with similar caverns which simply haven't collapsed into blue holes yet. Who knows what these cave systems could be hiding? Undiscovered species? Answers to some of the ocean's mysteries? The possibilities really are endless. In our number four spot today, we have marine life. So of course, this stunning location is a popular tourist attraction. People really want to dive here and I absolutely cannot blame them. But one thing you may encounter, should you choose this as your next adventure spot, are sharks. There are a few different species of sharks that enjoy calling the waters around the Blue Hole home. They include bull sharks, Caribbean reef sharks, and hammerhead sharks. Surprising these sharks aren't even at the top of the concerns list when it comes to diving here, as shark attacks truly are quite rare. Sharks are pretty gentle creatures and we're not their favorite thing to snack on, but they are big, they are powerful, and they can do a lot of damage when the going gets tough or when they feel frightened or threatened, and that is just one of the many, many reasons that this is an area that hopes for more experienced divers rather than a place someone would recommend for their first solo dive. And our number three spot today we have nitrogen. Another thing you will likely encounter should you choose to go diving here is something that is actually quite common for those who like to venture and dive in the deep sea. We are talking about nitrogen narcosis. Basically, divers of course use oxygen tanks to help them breathe underwater. These tanks normally don't just contain oxygen, they contain a mix of oxygen, nitrogen, and some other gases as well. This is all fine and well, but the deep sea is not like our lives up here. After about 100 feet, the increase in pressure can alter these gases, and to be honest, the further you go, the more the pressure increases. When the these altered gases are inhaled, they can have unusual sort of intoxicating effects on the body. This is something that people who choose to dive here will experience and it can be disorienting to say the very least. These effects are reversible and should wear off when you get to shallower water, but when you begin to feel the effects, it won't be at the time you're ascending, your dive instructor will likely be only leading you deeper into the waters. This is all just a long way of saying, it's a step you need to be aware of and prepared for. In our number two spot today, we have toxicity. So the simplest way to put this is that at the bottom of the great blue hole, it is poisonous. After you get about two thirds of the way down to the bottom, the water is just full of hydrogen sulfide. This means that there is little to no oxygen left down there, which is exactly why any marine creatures that get stuck down there are sure to meet a gruesome fate, but it is also why the water is actually toxic and corrosive. If you get deep enough without the proper protection, this hole will kill you and any other living thing that goes in it. It is truly unforgiving. Some of the experts in that 2018 expedition said that there were thousands of remains of marine life, like conches, which is a result of these creatures just getting a little too close to the edge. One explorer even said that you could see little prints where the conches presumably were trying to climb back up before being asphyxiated by the toxic water. Yeah, so basically while it looks beautiful on the surface, the Great Blue Hole is just a macabre marine life cemetery. In our number one spot today, we have remains. By far the most unsettling of all of of the discoveries on this list are the bodies of two divers that were found during this 2018 expedition. There have been three divers who are known to have gone missing after going diving in the Great Blue Hole, and to be honest, we aren't sure which two were found or exactly how they died. The reason for this is because, despite the fact that they were found, authorities decided that the best thing to do would be to leave them. Of course, rescue is a complicated process, but they agreed and decided that, 
quote, they're at peace where they are. It serves as a reminder of how dangerous it can be, even for those with all of the experience necessary. Starting us off with number 10 are zombie worms or bone-eating worms. Now this creature can grow up to being two inches long if it's female, whereas the males are microscopic. Now despite being worms and not sounding all that scary, they can eat rock-hard bones of animals a million times bigger than them like whales. They secrete acids that allow them to access the inner contents of the bones, and then the symbiotic bacteria converts the bones, proteins, and fats into food for the worms. They have feathery branches all over them that help pour oxygen into the worm so it stays alive. They can be found at the depth of around 9,491 feet, feeding on the carcasses of dead whales. I'm okay with worms, but these worms I cannot do. Coming in at number nine is the vampire squid. It's incredibly fast, incredibly pale. It sparkles in the light. You know what it is the vampire squid. <laughs> but if you said Edward Cullen, I wouldn't be mad either. Now the vampire squid is the last surviving member of the Vampira Morphida, and therefore they share qualities with both the octopus and the squid. It uses its ear-like fin to swim and its jellyfish-shaped body helps it swim fast. They can grow up to being 30 centimeters long and vary from being a pale red color to being jet black. When they're on the hunt, they use the photophers covering their body to light up in patterns that confuse their prey. When they're the ones being hunted, they pull the webbing between their tentacles right over their head and just hide in there kind of like a cocoon. Kind of like I do when I'm having a depressive episode. Just in my cocoon. <laughs> At number eight, we have the deep sea hatchet fish. Now I don't ever use the term fugly because I think it's so rude, but this sour faced looking fish is actually fugly. The hatchet fish is quite small. They only go up to three to 12 centimeters long, which is actually nothing. Hence, as you can imagine, they're quite an easy prey. Despite being disadvantaged by their size, they camouflage techniques makes them basically invisible to predators. They produce light from their stomach, making them bioluminescent. They control how much light they emit by how much light is in the water at the time. If you reveal your silhouette, then it's game over, so they try and match the light levels in the water so they remain hidden. They can be found anywhere between 50 meters below the surface to 1,500. Filling on number seven slot is the ping pong tree sponge, aka the chondrocladia. Honestly, when I first saw a picture of the sponge, I thought it was a bunch of balloons on a stick. But I mean, I refuse to judge the creature by its name or its balloon-like structure, so let's get into it. It's thin and long and has little translucent balls at the end of it, which look like ping pong balls, hence the name. However, they're actually dotted with tiny hooks, meaning if any prey gets too close, they'll become trapped and then the sponge will just start eating it alive. It is legitimately a flesh-eating sponge that's found 2,700 meters under the surface. Now, at number six is the Dumbo octopus scientifically known as the Grimpotethis. Now from the name, you can probably guess that this creature kind of looks like Disney's Dumbo the elephant. It has floppy ears on the side, deep set eyes, and eight short tiny tentacles, and honestly, it's, it's quite cute. I wouldn't mind finding that if I was deep underwater. However, you guys know me, I'll never be deep underwater. It can be found at least 9,800 meters deep in the trench, and I kind of want to hug it. The Dumbo octopus can grow up to being eight to 12 inches big, and they actually travel through the water by flapping their ears. But don't be fooled by their cuteness because they can still swallow their prey in one single gulp. So I mean, I mean, I mean. Coming in at number five is the frilled shark. Now you guys know how I feel about sharks. I refuse to look at them. I don't even want to think about them. I really wouldn't mind if they went extinct, but that's just me. Now the frilled shark is one of the ugliest variations of the mammal that I have ever seen. They have a snake-like body, but they sort of look like eels and boast a set of 300 teeth, which is insane. Despite living so deep, at least 5,000 meters below the surface, the frilled shark was actually one of the first deep sea creatures to ever be discovered. I don't know how since they're so deep and frankly terrifying, but facts are facts. The name is inspired by the creature's frilled gills. They've been dubbed a living fossil, so they have very primitive looking features. And honestly, when you look at it, you'll know what I mean. The thing looks like it's been alive for a million years and it's on its last breath. And hopefully, for my sake, I hope it is. Mic drop. At number four is the deep sea dragonfish. I feel like the deeper the creatures are, the uglier they get. Like, why is that the rule of this video? The dragonfish has oversized teeth, a slippery skin that looks like an eel's, and a 
hideous face. Reaching up to 6 inches long, they can be found between 700 to 6,000 feet below the surface and are known as an assassin. Like most deep sea creatures, the dragonfish is bioluminescent and not only uses it to hide from its predator and preys, it also glows in order to communicate with its own kind. They're ugly because they have this whisker-like lighted barbell coming out from its lower jaw that other fish think is a meal, so they just come closer and closer thinking they're gonna get their lunch and they're not. You know why? Because it's a trap. It's a trap. Filling on in three saw is the barrel eye fish. And this fish made me laugh so much. I don't even know why. For some reason, it just looks like it's so done with life and it's just so over everything. Like it's just so mad at the fact that it's a barrel fish. It's like, why me? And you know for a fact if it could talk, you know it have those deep voices and would just take way too long to even complete a sentence. Either way, first things first, this fish has a transparent head. Let's just talk about that. It has two barrel-shaped eyes that point upwards, allowing it to see the silhouette of all its prey. They can be found between 400 to 2,500 meters deep, and scientists theorize they have transparent heads so they can get a bit more light inside. Personally, I just think this one is kind of cute. Now, another two is the telescope octopus, found at depths deeper than 6,500 feet. These octopi don't swim horizontally. No, no, they actually suspend themselves upwards. That makes it harder for predators below them to see their shape. They're almost completely transparent and the reason they're called the telescope octopus is because they have two protruding eyes that not only rotate, they also allow the octopus a much wider peripheral vision. Honestly, they're also kind of cute and small and their eyes are tiny. They're just very cute little creatures. The octopus that looks like one of those toys you'd get in a McDonald's Happy Meal. I know this because I have eaten many McDonald's Happy Meals growing up. It's my go-to order, my chicken burger, gotta have it. And finally, at number one is the goblin shark. Now, I think this creature is by far the ugliest one on the list, which may be why it takes our number one spot, I'm not gonna lie to you. Also known as a living fossil, this species is 125 million years old and can be found at depths lower than 4,300 feet. They can grow anywhere between 10 to 13 feet long, and the most prominently ugly thing about them is their snout. It kind of resembles a sword, and its jaws not only protrude, they extend when eating. If that isn't horrific enough, they also have 30 to 50 teeth on their upper jaw and 30 to 60 on their lower. The goblin shark uses sight, smell, and electroperception to track down their prey, but you don't know that much about them since sightings of them are so, so rare. And that is it for today's video, guys. You already know I don't like the water. I hate sharks. I have such a phobia. You're not going to find me trying to look for any of these creatures, to be honest. Screw that shit. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have a plastic bag. It is unfortunately no surprise that on one of the deepest dives we as humans have ever been able to accomplish, along with all of the amazing new creatures and never been explored places, there would be none other than a plastic bag. In 2019, Victor Vescovo took a dive into the Challenger Deep, which is the deepest part of the Mariana Trench, which is an unbelievable feat and not an easy task, and he was rewarded by being reminded of human trash. Despite that little finding, Victor broke the record for deepest dive, which is of course amazing for scientific advancements and research. Every time someone manages to do these things that once seemed impossible, we get closer to revealing more of our ocean's mysteries that lay at the deepest points on Earth, which is very, very cool. While it would be amazing if the dives weren't plagued with plastic pollution, at least they were able to also discover a bunch of new crustaceans and give us all a little look into what life looks like in the Mariana Trench. In our number eight spot today, we have comb jellies. Comb jellies are gelatinous creatures that are named for their unique plates of fused cilia, which are called combs. These combs help the jelly move through the water like boat oars, and while other microscopic organisms also have this sort of mechanism, comb jellies are the largest animal with this feature. These combs are also part of the reason that comb jellies are so gorgeous to look at. Rather than bioluminescence, the rainbow light effect that can sometimes be seen on them is from light diffracting off of the combs in all different directions. Many comb jellies have one pair of tentacles, although they appear to have multiple, but that is just caused by their tentacles branching out. I'm saying the word tentacles. <laughs> 
These tentacles are used to help them hunt like a sort of fishing line. Aside from this, these jellies don't sting, which is always a good thing. Not that I'm planning on heading into the deep sea anytime soon. In terms of today's list, I'd say these guys are one of the less creepy creatures we've got going on today. Coming in at our halfway point at number five, we have the frilled shark. As if you weren't terrified enough of sharks, this one looks just as terrifying. Although, now that I see more pictures of it, I can't really take it seriously because it just reminds me of Jerry Seinfeld in the frilly shirt. Anyone else remember that episode? Sorry, Jer Bear, the shark wore it better. The frilled shark got its name for its six to seven frilled gills on the side of its snake-like body. But that's not the creepiest part of this shark. The frilled shark has a set of 300 razor sharp teeth. They can grow up to six feet in size, which is 1.8 meters. Even though this was one of the first deep sea animals to be discovered in the 19th century, it's not the easiest to find. These sharks swim at depths of 16,000 feet, which is around 5,000 meters. However, it is extremely difficult for scientists to study this deep sea creature. They swim at such deep levels that when brought to the surface, they practically die immediately. Due to those reasons, there isn't much known about the habits and life cycles of these sharks, but but maybe this is just one of those things that is better left unknown. 